Welcome back to my channel. This is Jackie here, your tech expert, where we share all the best tech tips ever, ever for you guys, programmers out there. Uh, like previously, we talked about the programming language for 2023, uh, which was, uh, well, you gotta check that video out. Well, uh, I'll be coming up with another video regarding about the top few languages to help you or your child to get uh, programming, into programming. Um, ASAP, you know, in a sense. Now, uh, if you want to know more about that, do drop me a message and drop a comment about that one. And uh, I'll share some tips regarding about learning those programming languages. But for today, specifically for programmers out there. Now, uh, today I'm going to show you how to install properly uh, Cocoa Pots uh, in order to get your development environment. So first off, we're going to start off with looking at our screen down here wonderful screen well mac really has a wonderful screen look at the definition as well as the colors but yeah we normally would think about whether what type of uh, browser we use so safari and google will be fine so down here in tech techopedia okay now it's wonderful resource and encyclopedia regarding about all kinds of different um, uh, technology resources and so forth even has uh, artificial intelligence cloud computing data management networking and cybersecurity so unfortunately we're not touch on those but maybe sometime in the later part so first off we're going to touch on uh, mac terminal where we're going to talk about cli now a cli means command line interface where you would find that in other uh, perspectives at all for example expo cli React Native CLI. Uh, all these are command line interface in order for you to interact with the server itself. Uh, in simple English, meaning to say, it's sort of like a Windows command prompt, but whatever you need to do down here, you can do it similarly like Windows. So before we get right to it, maybe I'll show you what it is about. And as you guys can see, I'm gonna you go into my spotlight. I'm gonna open terminal. As you can see, my username is out there. Uh, please don't hack my com. <laughs> now, um, next we have to open it using CD. Uh, and if you want to open any folders or anything like that, or locate any folders, you can use that. But do take note, you do need to reference it accordingly, like sort of like a systematical branch way. So what I'm going to put is desktop. So I'm in my desktop right now. So what can I do? I could create a folder, for example, mkdri. Do you remember it's mkdri? Now we can name our folder any kind of name. For example, home, smart, like that. And boom. As you guys can see, I've got two folders down there. Right? Makes sense? Okay, now here, why not? Let's see. Okay, maybe we could make more folders. So mkdri, uh, home, smart, home to let's see what happens there we go now if your file name exists it will not it will not repeatedly create that folder itself again okay so do need to take note about that one okay now in order to, for you to go into the homebrew environment first off we're gonna have to open and I want to check on terminal okay now, after we have done this, now this is the username. Do not go into your download folders or anything like that. Because if you do so, it is only gonna specifically be in that folder. You don't want that, okay? It's disastrous, but you don't want that, okay? Now, what you need is you need to locate whether if your brew is correct. So first off, I would recommend you to type this, which brew, just like that. So you understand that, oh, okay, in the user local ID, we have it under the bin folder brew. There we go. So I'm still worried. I, I want to double check on whether if it's working or not. So I will have to type command dash V, which is the version brew. There you go. So again, you have that again, which is the brew is still available. Okay, my, my, my brew is being installed. So maybe you might have it as oops there's an error oops something's missing or you does not exist you know something like that so what we have to do is we need to go and allocate that so i'm going to put this aside okay 
do check this uh, uh, web page out. So I'm going to increase this one. Here we go. Oh, lots of news down here today. <laughs> okay, now um, we're going to first off type home brew. Let's say that. Okay. Now, uh, well, I can don't allow the location. Now, in order to go that, make sure it's brew sh. Right click, open it up. And as you can see, this is my brew. Now, this web page, the home brew itself, you're able to allocate things. For example, how to install it. And the system would detect it. See, paste that in the Max OS terminal or Linux shell prompt. So if you're using Linux, you could do the same thing as well. It will work fine. Okay? Now, what does the brew do? You can see we can install stuff into the Apple system with the widget. Okay, you can also specifically install packages that you require or might be missing. Okay. Uh, overall, you could also uh, do a GitHub, okay, Ruby scripts, and also find last but not least, but we can also use for uh, other non open source uh, software and so forth. Now, for furthermore uh, reading, you can go to docs brew sh, okay. Now, coming back, now we're gonna have to open the terminal again, and again, I'm gonna open this terminal, and you can see it's a clear new terminal now it's back onto my use face okay now after checking on that i have to make sure that i click on this which is the copy and paste action well after i do that all i have to do is just put this in and done deal okay now in some cases when you're installing brews or any cocoa parts you might require or, well any programs put it this way uh using this terminal uh file prompt you might be required to add in something called sudo okay now uh sudo on the other hand is only meant for mac users okay so in order to ensure that it goes right deep down into your mainframe system because if you don't add sudo it might create a little bit of a crash down there okay so now come back to homebrew i'm gonna click install and it's gonna start running now, as you guys can see, I've told you about the pseudo. Hopefully it's useful. <laughs> well, um, but there's a problem. Uh, checking for pseudo access, which may request your password. So you might need to provide a password. So as you guys can see, I'm gonna put in my password and it's gonna start installing. There you go. Now, it's gonna prompt me with these in my folder. So it's all gonna be stored within the local. And then once I, all I have to do is just press enter. It's gonna start installing. Okay. Now, meanwhile, fast forward to the next. Uh, I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay. Welcome back. Um, I guess the installation is complete. Uh, so you guys can see, um, they just did an update from my side. Okay. But um, for users, you might have a problem that there are uh, homebrews are being installed, and it might take a while. So maybe about a coffee break. Okay, so um, putting that aside now, once I'm done with that, I would see some um, prompts. For example, uh, there will be uh, analytics, uh, GitHub brew donations. Well, we do need to, you know, contribute to the society a bit. <laughs> but the most important thing is your next steps. Now, th this is what you really need to look into. Okay, now if you are prompt to next steps and you have to do some. Uh, updates they will prompt you on that so do copy and paste uh, in order to run that command line and get your Mac working now for my instance I would copy this brew help to get it started copy paste and I would be able to see what my brew looks like okay so as you guys can see I have a brew search tags and uh, update information upgrade okay I could choose whatever I need to do down here Okay, the command line. So if I want to double check if uh, I need an update, so I could click brew update. So let's see if there's an update. And update should not be required. And as you guys can see, already up to date. Okay, there you go. Okay, so these are the command lines that you're going to experience. Now, uh, after you have done this, do take note, you do need an Xcode command line. Uh, so do start on that one. Uh, so for example, now you can see I have an Xcode. 
being installed. <laughs> now, as you guys can see, see, select the platforms that you want to install, blah, 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 blah. Now I could choose to install or I could choose not to, uh, which is not required. After I click installed, uh, remember to put your password, which you guys can't see. Sorry about that. Now, in order to do that, um, you need to go to the app store and find Xcode. Let's see, see. Uh, yeah, that's my big name down there. Now here, now you can click on Xcode and you should be able to find it. Now Xcode has various tools, very interesting tools, okay? Uh, personally, I'm an Apple fan and I've been an Apple developer for like six years. Uh, uh, six, six or eight years maybe I would say yeah so I've been developing apps uh, and it's a fun process uh, I would say um, comparing wise uh, Xcode has a more cleaner slick uh, for example uh, you can see down here they have a very clean UI interface you could run previews you could also connect you know to your uh, APIs and check that on their systems and you can have it in the dark mode and the light mode as well Okay, now putting that aside, now I'm gonna go back here. Uh, all you have to do is just uh, click on it and you should be able to download it. Now, if in the instance where you wanna download your app and put it on the App Store, now you might wanna start using this, which is the Apple Developer uh, Software Program, okay? Uh, number one, you could see all the little variations, like the highlights, how to create an app, so and so forth, okay? now. Uh, but for instance, I'll be having a tutorial uh, regarding about Swift, uh, which is uh, down in the description below, okay? Uh, so do let me know about it if you want to know more, okay? Now, putting that aside, I'm going to close this. Now, as you guys can see, my X code should be up in a second. There we go. Okay, so as you guys can see, there are new updates regarding about X code. Uh, so I'm going to click continue, pretty much about that one. Uh, we can create a new Xcode project just like that. Okay. Now, take a look about the new Xcode projects. We can create apps, document apps, games, augmented reality apps, my favorite. Um, app Swift Playgrounds, uh, sticker packs, iMessage apps, Safari extensions, frameworks, statistics library, metal library, and so forth. But we're going to touch mostly on that. Um, also, just for your information, now if you're creating an app for Mac OS, iOS, and Watch OS, you could use a multi platform, okay, where you can have the options of a game, document app, or a game itself, okay. Now, for these three, uh, it's included in the learning tutorial which I'm going to provide. Uh, so, if you want to know more, you could try it up, okay. Now, iOS, we're going to start off with iOS and with an app. Okay, now we can create any names that you want to. So for example, maybe let's call it uh, uh, today's, uh, why not let's call it uh, Candy, Candy Smile. You know, Candy Crush, Candy Smile. No offense, Candy Crush, you guys are awesome, but uh, I'm gonna try out with Candy Smile today, okay? Now, we're gonna make sure that it's in Swift UI, unless you want it to be in UI Kit, which is a storyboard version. Okay, which would run on Objective C. Uh, I would recommend using Swift UI. It's a much more uh, updated user face. Okay, now you could use the core data, include tests, which we could exclude that. You could also host in Cloud Kit. Now, uh, since last year, uh, oh no, since this year, 2022, uh, in the uh, developers uh, uh, seminar, uh, Xcode was released along with a new option which is cloud kit so apple did a wonderful job with this i i would want to say so thumbs up to apple okay uh coming up uh coming from your developer okay now you could host it in your cloud kit and whatever you want to fetch whatever you want to do you could do it in cloud kit so no more hard drives no more thumb drives no more those kind of uh, funny funny uh, gadgets walking around you know all you need is just one laptop done deal okay easy so very considerate, I would say. Uh, Apple has been very considerate about users. Now I'm gonna download this, and I'm gonna put it in my desktop. Okay. Now, as you guys can see now down here. All oh, right. Okay. Now I have a Swift UI interface right now. Awesome, right? Okay. So now 
Uh, I'm gonna explain more about the Swift UI uh, in the next video, so do take note about this one, okay?